Hey there, my name is Jake Reed, and I will be giving you a topic analysis for the public forum debate topic for November of 2016. And before I get into the real nitty gritty of this debate topic that I know you guys are oh so excited about, I want to tell you just a little bit about myself. I graduated high school in 2008. I did forensics in high school for three years. I went to the NFL National Tournament twice in international extemporaneous speaking, and I went to the Catholic Forensic League National Tournament three times, once in extemp, once in Congress, and then once in public forum as well. And just to give you an idea of who you're dealing with, yes, I still have all my ballots for all three years and may or may not still read them. Uh, so with that being said, I'm really excited about this topic and I want you to hopefully get more comfortable with the topic by watching this video. And that's really the purpose of this is to give you an idea of some of the arguments that you are going to be facing when you debate this topic in the upcoming month. And I know some of these other topic analysis videos have really focused a lot on the affirmative side or the pro side. So my my video is admittedly going to be heavily weighted toward the negative or the con side. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm going to start by reading the resolution word for word as you should do in every single one of your constructive speeches, no matter what side of the resolution that you're on. Resolved, on balance, the benefits of the Internet of Things outweigh the harms of decreased personal privacy. And I have a feeling after uh, some of the people that I've talked to, you and I probably had the same reaction to this topic whenever we first read it. When I first read this, I did not want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. I didn't know what the Internet of Things was or is, if it was a real thing, if it was just a made-up term, and it was just very confusing. And that's going to be very critical when you go into debate this topic. And one of the first things I want to talk about are a couple of observations about this resolution, and this will sort of clear up some things that I think you may get bogged down in in the round, and I want you to try to avoid that. The first, and again, a lot of this is going to be assuming that you will be either uh, flipping con or having to debate the negative if the other team chooses to be pro or decides their speaker order uh, and you are kind of left with the leftovers. Uh, the first observation is don't be afraid of common ground. Common ground is not conceding, so I don't want you to be afraid or unwilling to accept that, yes, there is some common ground. I think one of the biggest things uh, that the resolution does for you is it really clears up a lot of possible arguments that you may have had or may have been able to use uh, in previous debates. This topic is truly unlike any other topic uh, that we have seen in public forum before. The resolution clearly states that, yes, there are benefits of the Internet of Things, and yes, there are decreased personal privacy issues that you are going to have to weigh. The way you're going to win this debate is if you can prove as the negative or the con that the harms of decreased personal privacy actually outweigh the benefits of the Internet of Things. So when you're going into this round, whether or not you're a first or second speaker, don't be afraid to discuss that, yes, there is common ground. Go ahead, get that out of the way first, and that way you can really delve into the arguments that are going to win your case and get you the win in this round. As always, there are some important definitions as there are in every single topic, but there are there is one key phrase that is going to be absolutely crucial to you possibly winning the round. And when I judge public forum, I really look for the team who seems to have the better grasp on the topic, who seems to be more knowledgeable of the topic, and not only be more knowledgeable about it, but if you can explain it to me in a way that I understand, and if you can explain it in a way that someone who has no idea what this is about, if you can win them over in that sense, I think you're really going to go a long way regardless of what side of the resolution you end up debating. And the, that phrase is the Internet of Things. That should be 
one of the first, if not the first thing you define in your constructive speech, again, no matter what side of the resolution you are debating. And this is one area where I think it's really important that if you happen to win the coin toss, you may want to think about choosing first speaker because if you can get in there first and you can set the tone of the rest of the round with a really solid definition of the Internet of Things and if you can really convince the judge exactly what you're talking about, I think that could go a long way not just in that particular round but also any other rounds that you may be facing at that tournament or tournaments later on in the month. And the reason why I say that is, is because if you have a confused judge, nobody is going to win in the end. And they may not pick the team that actually deserves to win. So have a good definition of the Internet of Things. Have a definition that obviously works for your case. But also make sure you have a definition that makes sense to the average person. You have to make this make sense to them. Otherwise, you could lose the judge in your first minute or so of your constructive speech, and that would not be a good thing. Another term that I think may offer some room for debate is personal privacy. Um, it may seem obvious, but depending on exactly what kind of case you want to run, especially on the con, you may want to try to find a definition that obviously specifically affects your particular case. But uh, there may or may not be a big deal about personal privacy. If your second speaker and the first speaker defines it in a way that you agree with, don't waste time on debating over a definition that is, is essentially the same. Uh, some other definitions or some other words that I think you don't need to waste time on are on balance. That's a pretty standard term in, in public forum debate. Uh, benefits outweigh I just wouldn't touch those. Those are uh, pretty universally accepted. And the reason why I say that, um, I, I may not normally say that in, in just any other uh, debate topic, but with this topic in particular, time management in the round is going to be so important. You need to devote enough time to defining and explaining what the Internet of Things is in your first speech that you really just don't have time to focus on these other words that probably don't need to be defined um, in the first place. And uh, just to reiterate, time management is going to be crucial. If you are first speaker, make sure, you know, you may only have time for one or two contentions. You're probably not going to have time for three contentions and certainly not four. Um, if you have enough time for four contentions, you're probably not spending enough time telling me what the Internet of Things is. So, also keep that in mind. That may, be, that may be a reason to not be first speaker, but I, I really think the advantage could be to the first speaker uh, in terms of really giving the impression to the judge that you know exactly what this is about and you make them feel comfortable enough that they know what exactly this is about. Because if you can establish that relationship where they feel comfortable with you explaining this very difficult concept to them, then you've already done a whole lot to win them over and then the rest of the round should be a piece of cake. Um, another thing that I want to touch on uh, before I get into some arguments and strategies uh, is there is a very well-written article that was done by Forbes magazine. Um, it gives a very easy to understand analysis of what the Internet of Things is. I think that could help you um, in your definition of what the Internet of Things is. Uh, reading that this article really gave me a lot of ideas to pursue further, um, and it is an article that I highly suggest that you read before debating this topic. And I'm going to actually post a link to that article in the description of this video. So um, you may even want to pause the video now read that article, and then continue with this video. But for sure, you want to read that article before uh, going to any tournaments on this topic. So again, I'm going to mainly be focusing on some negative arguments and some strategies. And a little bit later, I'll kind of explain more of why I'm going to focus so much on the negative. I think that'll become a little bit clearer as I go farther um, into this video. Uh, one of the best strategies that I think you're going to be able to take if you flip the con is exploiting the security flaws in the overwhelming number of devices included under the umbrella of the Internet of Things. We're talking 
millions, if not billions and billions of different devices of all kind. It is truly overwhelming the number of things that can fit under the umbrella of the Internet of Things. So in a sense, that's a good thing. You have a lot of areas to explore, a lot of devices that may or may not have big security flaws that could be a threat to personal privacy. Um, you should have no trouble finding research on devices that have been hacked and exactly what that means for personal privacy. And remember, this is kind of something that may trip you up. Um, as the negative, the, the resolution requires you to remain only in the scope of personal privacy. Uh, one example, as I was doing some research, I found this article that I was very excited at the beginning, but then I realized it probably would not be, probably not get me very far in this topic. Um, there are some arguments out there that are about electronic waste and how that affects personal health and the environment. Uh, but unless you can somehow spin that back to personal privacy, which I'm not saying is impossible, um, you probably will not get very far with that particular topic. So make or with that particular argument. So make sure that every single thing you're talking about somehow relates back to personal privacy. Otherwise, the affirmative or the pro side is going to if they're a good team, be right there and attack that as possibly not being topical. Um, sort of on the same note, if I were debating the con side, which I'll go ahead and tell you, after my research, I would feel pretty comfortable debating the con side, so I'm hoping after you watch this video, you will also be comfortable in debating the con side, whether or not you choose to or you have to if you do not win the coin toss. Um, I would invest a lot of time in exploring the security flaws of us as humans using the devices that are included under the uh, umbrella of the Internet of Things. I want to say that one more time. The security flaws that us as humans have using these devices. I think this is a really interesting argument that I would spend a lot of time pursuing uh, because I think it's one that is going to be extremely hard to refute if you do this well and if you are convincing and very persuasive. I think this will be an argument that you find very helpful in trying to win the overall debate. Uh, there are tons of statistics out there showing how people use the same passwords for every device they have. Even And so if even one device is hacked, essentially they are all end up getting hacked. Uh, there's actually a recent study that shows three out of four consumers use duplicate passwords among different devices. So Another reason you can, if if there's a security flaw in one particular device that someone owns, if that gets compromised, then in effect, every single device that that person has could be compromised. And with the Internet of Things, one thing that's interesting is this is not only a connection between people and people, this is a connection between people and devices, people and people, devices and devices, and people and their devices to other people and their devices. So you can hopefully tell that uh, there seems to be a lot of room for at least doubt that there could be some problems. And that's where you're really going to have to sell this to the judge. If you can prove that there is some type of doubt within the resolution, I think you deserve to win the debate. Um, there was a, another report done by Consumer Reports. Uh, it was a survey done back in 2014 that found that 34% of smartphone users took no security measures to protect their devices. And that included even setting, at the time, a four-digit passcode. They didn't even set a passcode. And one thing that I think you can argue uh, as the con is that no matter how many devices we have, no matter how many great things are going to be done, if you're not going to fix the issue of people not protecting themselves, then that doesn't matter. And I think you have the heavier, more uh, stronger argument in, in that sense. Um, the pro side may argue that there are plenty of applications dedicated to creating strong and very secure passwords, but that does no good if people are not going to actually use them. And I think this is an area where there should be a very strong point of clash throughout the debate. Uh, and I think there are a lot of opportunities for great arguments from both sides. Another thing that you should be aware of, especially if you are debating the con side, is the enormous 
amount of examples available for use by your opponent. The way that the resolution is worded really gives them the freedom to explore just about any argument so long as they can prove there is a benefit or that a benefit is expected to occur. And it's going to be impossible for you to have a unique response for every single scenario that the pro brings up. So we need to establish that now. There are going to be some very out there arguments, maybe some things that you have absolutely never heard of before. The good news is, is that if you have never heard of them before, your judge may also have never heard of them before, and I want you to use that to your advantage. Uh, and I do think that there are a few strategies for attacking uh, in this area. The first is going to be the usefulness of the benefit or its relevance. Remember, something can be topical without being useful or relevant. Relevant. If you are uh, discussing a serious threat to personal privacy and your opponent is arguing the benefit of a toaster knowing when to turn on in the morning, obviously you have the more serious, heavier, weightier type of argument and your judge is probably going to take you more seriously and maybe even consider giving you the win just because you're talking about something more serious. Uh, now, obviously, the pro is going to have many, many examples of benefits uh, and many that are likely really good benefits. This goes back to that common ground. We know that there are benefits. We also know that there are situations of decreased personal privacy. That's really not up for debate. It's going to be, again, tipping the scale. Remember that term, outweigh. As the con, you've got to tip the scale to prove to the judge that the risk or the uh, possible harm of decreased personal privacy is just too high regardless of what the pro side brings up. So with that being said, it's your job as the con to use the definition that you provide in your constructive speech of the Internet of Things to lump all this together and attack it all at once. And that is a way that I think you possibly can get around these off-the-wall, oddball arguments that undoubtedly some pro teams are probably going to bring up. This is why your definitions are extremely important and crucial in your constructive speech, and it is very important that you take the time to explain them clearly because you are undoubtedly going to have to come back to them later on in the debate. And if you don't establish a clear message up front, it doesn't matter what you do later on. You've got to establish it up front, and that way you can use it again throughout the debate. Another issue that I want you to consider is that if you run security arguments, which obviously most of what I've talked about today is kind of under the umbrella of security, uh, you need to be ready for the pro to talk about something called two-factor authentication, uh, which is a way that websites and apps, they try to uh, make it harder for other people to steal your login information and thereby stealing whatever information you have given to said device or said app. Um, and it, again, it's just basically a way of securing certain devices. As the con, don't dispute the fact that there is um, two-step authentication because it is out there. Um, lots of tech-savvy people use it. Um, but what I would argue is the con, this is a way you can kind of turn this, is that while there are those methods of security in place, those are there to make it harder for hackers to access your information, but that does not make it impossible. Let me say that again because it's important. These security measures that are in place are designed to make it harder for people to access your information, but that does not make it impossible. And I think this is another point where if you can really be persuasive and really sell this point, you can po probably win your judge over regardless of what the pro comes back with to what you say. Um, I have seen some evidence that talks about how government budget deficits or cuts may impact companies' abilities to develop new ways to prevent hackers from accessing your information. So I think that's another area uh, that you can explore. With all that being said, I wanted I do want to go over a few more things, um, and these are going to be based off of what I have seen at tournaments so far this year. Um, not really topic wise, but more so uh, just debate wise. And I want to talk about Crossfire um, because what I have seen, and I've, I've judged three tournaments so far, um, 
as of the end of October. And one thing that I've identified as a weakness in almost every single debate that I've judged is the crossfire. And that is one of the most important parts of the debate. If your crossfire is weak, you really don't have that clash that public forum really demands and deserves. Um, and so I want to give you a couple of tips here to make sure that you have the best crossfire possible to help you win the debate and hopefully win the tournament. Um, the first is you need to have at least five questions prepared before the round. As you are researching this topic, and many of you have already researched the topic, uh, but as you continue to go through the month, you need to have questions prepared before the round. Absolutely, you may have issues that your opponent just brought up and they're constructive that you want to address, but I've seen several crossfires where they do not go the full three minutes or there's lots of dead space and that's just not a good thing. You need to always be prepared to say something, and so that's why you need to have at least five questions prepared before the round. Um, that way, if your opponent runs arguments that you have not thought of a way to combat, you at least have some questions and that'll buy you some time to uh, figure out what to say to your opponent. Another tip that's really important for Crossfire is know when it's time to move on. There are so many issues that you can really get bogged down in going back and forth and back and forth with your opponent. You need to know when it's time to move on. There are a couple of cases where you may make your point and you really want to make sure the judge is aware of that so you keep going after it and after it. Or there may be a point where you're not agreeing with your opponent or the question just sort of gets out of hand and the crossfire just falls apart and basically loses itself. You need to know when it's time to move on. Make your point and move on. Answer a question and then ask your question. That's very important to make sure that you are advancing the debate. That's what crossfire is for, to advance the debate. And so you need to make sure that what you're talking about is relevant and that you're going to actually come back to it later. Um, and that is actually going straight into my next um, tip for you is I'm calling it don't set it and forget it in crossfire. If you make an argument, if you feel like you win an argument in crossfire, you absolutely need to capitalize on that by discussing it in your rebuttal speech, in your uh, very last speech, any possible time after you say it, especially if you're winning an argument, you need to be bringing that up as much as possible. Don't just cover ground in crossfire and then not ever touch it again. You need to use that later on in the round. And again, I, I think I've just covered this, but crossfire should be used to advance your case. Um, don't waste time debating over trivial things that you know you're not going to come back to. Um, make sure you're focusing on the really important stuff that you know uh, that you're going to be uh, coming back to later on in the debate. So with that, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I didn't mention this off the top, but this is actually my first time to ever do anything like this. So I really hope that you found this video very helpful. Um, please let me know what you liked or what you did not like. I'm very open to feedback. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I'll also put my contact information in the description part of this video. So, so uh, make sure to check that out. So with that being said, good luck on your November debates, no matter how many tournaments you're going to. If this is your 26th tournament or if it is your very first tournament. I think this is going to be an exciting topic and there are going to be a lot of exciting arguments. So again, take care and good luck in November.